All right, welcome to episode 79 of the Abed Podcast presented by War Media, where we give you our thoughts on the latest Chicago baseball news, as well as take a trip around the league. I am Saul Rodriguez, joined by my co-host, Miles Porter. We are back from our little holiday break. Uh, you know, whatever holiday you're celebrating, hope it was a good one. Miles, how was your holidays, man? Man, it was, it was good. It was good. It's been very chill. Caught up on a lot of sleep. I was at the Bulls game the other day, and I and spoke with the Cubs PA announcer Jeremiah Peprocki, who's who's such an awesome down you know down to earth dude, and he knows my dad because my dad worked at Wrigley at Wrigley Field, um, and so it was just cool. It was just cool getting getting to talk to him for for a little bit at the Bulls game because I think he was doing something with the marketing team or some sort of whatever the case may be. Um, of course, the game that I go to to see the Bulls play, they lose against the Cavs, whatever. Then they win yesterday against the Hawks. Well, whatever. I'm not mad about it. I am a little bit, um, but I mean, aside from that, man, it's been good, man. It's been it's been really good getting it in. I'm in my off season regimen, getting ready for a uh, for a long season next year. Hell yeah, hell yeah, and then yeah, that's dude. That's one guy that um uh, we definitely uh should get in the podcast, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Paprocki. Like that guy is yeah. he's doing it. He does so much and he's so good at everything. And like he yeah. he, he I saw that he's doing like a. He's going to have like a late show now on at one of the theaters in Chicago and he's going to have various guests and um, it's pretty cool. Like that's what was definitely awesome. And, and yeah. for, as for the bulls, uh, of course they lose, like it's a, it's the only game they've lost in their homestand. And of course it's the one you do, go to. I feel like I have the same luck, bro. Like I went every out of Cubs game, like of course they lose like the one game from the series and then lose the other or win the yeah. other two. And it's like, they were just so annoying, but. It is what it is. And the, the bull, other and, two games are just lit. It was a walk off win. Yeah. <laughs> a fight broke out. And <laughs> it rallied know, right? seven down in, in the eighth inning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously. And, and then when, if I ever <laughs> see a walk off, nothing. Yeah, ex- exactly. And if, if I ever see a walk off or anything like that, it'll be like half of a game that I went to. Like, I think I've said it on here, but like one of the only walk offs I've ever seen, I got there like in the seventh inning. So <laughs> at, oh. least I got to see, at least I got to see the walk off. But it was like I'm about to say, you saw it. That's, that's dope. Yeah, at least yeah, I was say, at least I saw it. But I was like, man, it was a good game regardless. So either way, but uh, yeah. no, I'm glad. I'm glad that you spent a, a good holiday and, and at least you got to go to a Bulls game. And hey, I will say they're they're doing better than the Blackhawks. So at least that's a, and and better than the Bulls if for the or, or breaks, excuse me, better than the Bears. Um, even though they've gotten a little hot. Uh, you know, not saying much for Chicago sports, but anything anything we can yeah. grasp. Uh, you know, I appreciate we you know that we definitely appreciate it because. You look at we'll baseball, man. Our baseball team's not doing much. The Cubs, the White Sox, just chilling. I mean, the White Sox are doing more than the Cubs, but uh, it's just been pretty uh, scarce for news. Uh, when it comes to yeah. the stuff that we missed while we're gone, um, the one and we will definitely get to it. Obviously, the big news is uh, Yoshinobu uh, Yamamoto. He got that twelve years, three hundred twenty-five million dollar deal from the Dodgers. We'll talk about you know how the impacts uh, the Dodgers and uh, the rest of baseball. And we'll also talk Royals because, you know, um, I was telling Miles before we came on, you know, I, I feel like we, we've ignored the Royals. We mentioned a couple of their additions when, you know, when they signed Seth Lugo. Uh, but, man, they have gone on a shopping spree this offseason. And, you know, say what you want, but they're going to be players next year in the in the uh, AL Central because the AL Central is just so weak. I wouldn't be surprised if they sneak in, you know, we, you know the second spot or third spot. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll get to that. And uh, so – First, we'll start off um, with uh, the team that's actually doing something. We'll, we'll start with the White Sox just because they, they, you know, they just signed uh, uh, Martin Maldonado to a uh, one-year deal with an option for a second year, um, and they're still standing pat on and cease, which we'll get to, you know, um, as well. Um, but yeah, what, what do you think about that signing? Because I think a lot of White Sox fans are like uh, are kind of on the, you know are kind of on one side or the other, right? It's either <laughs> they're pissed because they're like, oh, we got a catcher that can't hit. Our catchers couldn't hit. And then they're like, oh, well, you know, Mar- Martin Maldonado, he was good at, he's been great at defense his whole career. And then, you know, up until last year, like, you know, but he's getting, a, he's a little older now in his late 30s. So it's, it's you know, not a giant surprise that his defense is starting to fall off. But um, when it comes to what, it, I guess, what it does to, or how it affects the younger catchers that they're going to have. Cause obviously they have get in their, you know, in their minor league system guys coming up. And also how does it affect the pitching staff? Because I, I, of course, you know, people always think about the hitting part first a lot of the time and they don't think about how it affects the pitching. 
Um, especially like on the north side, you know, you got a guy like Jan Gomes who seems so crucial to the pitchers as well as he is um, uh, behind the plate uh, or excuse me, uh, when he's hitting. So how do you think this affects the White Sox and, and the pitching staff as well as their young catchers? I think, I think it's positive. I think it's very positive just for someone who's very talented behind the plate, obviously, as we know. Um, obviously, we're not going to expect a lot out of him uh, offensively. And like you like you spoke about, uh, yeah, you know, it, it was kind of a down year overall for uh, Maldonado last year. But I really like the leadership and experience that he brings. And in my opinion, he's still one of the best catchers in baseball. Um, and he can call a hell, a hell of a game back there. And that's going to be great for the young guys. Uh, coming up behind him too, because Maldonado, uh, he's he's a, he's a short term option. I think uh, the majority of what they want out of him is to kind of groom these young catchers and, and work with these younger pitchers. As this White Sox team is trying to figure it out going into 2024 and beyond, because you know they 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 they've kind of been forced to hit the reset button a little bit, take a step back and kind of look at everything as a whole and. Um, we always talk about leadership with the White Sox. And I think you bring in a guy like Martin Maldonado with, with the experience that he has uh, with a lot of winning baseball. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot for this White Sox ball club. And, you know, I think he's going to bring some very solid culture to this clubhouse. I'm hoping, you know, other veterans that they bring on or who have already been there, I'm hoping that they step up uh, with him as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and then also you, I feel like with a guy like that is is almost like another coach, you know, um, exactly and it's a guy that you know i feel like could easily be a manager when he retires because he's such a you know he calls a great game and yeah regardless of whatever's falling off whether it be the defense or the offense whatever it is um he's gonna always call a great game i think that doesn't fade away that's just how you yeah know, good catchers yeah. are when, like when you compare guys like you know yadi molina or like even like a david ross you know for example uh so yeah that that is what i liked about the signing and i think it's definitely going to help the Sox, you know, one way or another. It's not, you know, a, a, a moot signing. So, um, I, other thing too, I wanted to talk to you about it was, is like I said, Dylan Cease, he's still there. Um, and and yeah. you know, my question to you is, you think at this point they'll they'll just keep him until the deadline because they, there's been talks all season or all off season, right, about like the Reds, the Cardinals, even mm-hmm. the Yankees, like so many teams, the Dodgers. Um, but it hasn't gone anywhere and white tax fans are just like, what's going on? Because you know, whatever, you know, it, it, I feel like it's better to get him, you know, out of Chicago ASAP, but at the same time, there might be a little bit of a benefit to holding on to him until the deadline and seeing maybe you can get a lot more, um, you know, when times a little more desperate for certain teams that are trying to, you know, win in July and, and August. But w- w- what do you think uh, will happen with Dylan Cease? Do you think, he will be traded this off season or will the White Sox just kind of hold on to him until the trade deadline in 2024? I think, I think uh, holding on to him until, you know, the trade deadline next year, because um, I think that they still believe in Dylan Steve's perform at a high level and kind of going back to what I was talking to earlier with them sort of in the reset, but uh, if he has a great first half next year, well, whatever team, uh, you know, wants him is they're going to give up a lot for him. And so I think that the White Sox will have a pretty reasonable asking price from whatever team is interested in Dylan Cease. Um, I, you know, I, I, I hate to see him go. It's very unfortunate what's unfolded here, and it's just a part of the game, a part of the business. But uh, if if I'm if I'm the GM, I'm I'm waiting until you know opening day, and it's kind of going from there, assessing what he can do because I think even. Coming off of last year, I think we did have a, little, have a little bit of a rough campaign. So maybe he has a bounce back 2024. Um, and, you know, teams like the Yankees, like you alluded to, are going to give up a lot for for a guy like this uh, to compete in, in October. So uh, I kind of like the idea of holding on to him until, you know, until further notice. Let's see how he does and then try to move him from that point going on. Yeah, no, and, and yeah, I I do agree with you that it does suck that you know he's gonna get moved and all that, but it it seems like the the it se- it does seem though uh, that I'd rather have that happen if I'm a White Sox fan than than like uh, the talks that you know at least Robert is gonna go anywhere. Um, yeah, which which I mean, as as far as we know, no, nothing is gonna happen with that. But there's been you know rumors, right? Um, but yeah. Uh, when it comes to yeah, Dylan Cease, I mean, he, he is the, the I think 
exactly what people see or, you know, when they talk about a player that could bounce back, especially because of his stuff. I mean, he has some of the most elite stuff in the league. Um, yeah. It's really, it, honestly, really up there with, you know, because how people, how people are describing like Tyler Glass now, who of course was traded to the, to the Dodgers and extended. Um, he's got, I mean, Dylan Cease has amazing stuff. So uh, yeah. yeah, I think he's definitely going to bounce back. And I think that's what teams like not only are banking on, but they're almost pretty optimistic that he will bounce back. Um, especially if he goes to like, think about it. I mean, you go to, you go to a team like the Dodgers, you go to a team like the Yankees, they have great, uh, you know, pitching coaches. They have great, um, just organization overall when it comes to pitching and they're very into, you know, uh, you know, you know, uh, with all those like different words, like seam shifted wake and all that. Right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. And, and definitely, um, I think he'd benefit wherever he goes, especially those teams. Yeah. So, um, interested to see where he goes. Obviously, you know, the one team that I think a lot of people think he'll go to is the Dodgers just because they, you know, right. They need starting pitching. Um, I mean, obviously now they have more, but they obviously, you can never have enough. And, uh, it's some, they obviously have the currency and players to get him. So, um, that's definitely one thing. I mean, uh, I will say this, if you, if you had your, your choice in where he goes, uh, when it comes to return, I'll say I'll say besides the Dodgers, um, and and I think the because because we've talked about it with Gabe on here multiple times, but like in in and Gabe always says like the Orioles he wants the Orioles, but besides like the Orioles and Dodgers, is there any team that sticks out? I mean, like for me, for example, um, as much as I wouldn't want to see him there, the Reds are a good team that the White Sox could do a trade with, um, yeah. just because they have the young prospects. Um, but there is other teams out there. I mean, hell, even. You know, uh, I feel like the Mets would also be a team that should be interested in Dylan Cease. Yes. Um, but is there anyone, in, any uh, other team in particular besides the Dodgers, you think that would be interested that might have the, the prospect capital uh, to get the White Sox? You know, maybe the Astros. I can maybe yeah. see the Astros kind of being mm-hmm. a surprising team in there. Because um, I think they, they've, they've always had a very solid pitching staff, but I think Dylan Cease is kind of pitching in a more competitive environment. It, such as Houston would be very beneficial. Uh, this is also an organization that has groomed a lot of very talented players. So um, another example of the White Sox can get a lot in that in that move. Um, you know, I would, I would love to see him on the Cubs as well. I think that'd be this would be kind of a cool fit for him uh, going forward. The, the 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 only thing about it when it comes to the Cubs, I don't know how willing. Jed is to get rid of mm-hmm. some of these young guys we've got in our farm system. I was talking to my old teammate from Oakton, who's one of the coaches in the minor leagues for the Cubs. Um, one of the things that he's always telling me is that uh, the Cubs have a lot of talent coming up, a lot of talent uh, coming up, which is very exciting f- for the long term for Cubs fans. Um, and we know kind of from the history of how this works. They like, they like to kind of wait sometimes and let these young guys develop, bring them up and see how they do, and then build off of that. Um, so as much as I'd like to see him, you know, pitch for the Cubs, I don't know how much Jet is willing to do it, but that's just that's that's another team where I feel like, hey, you know, I think we can we haven't done anything. We can add some depth in our rotation. That'd be awesome too. Um so yeah, I think I think there's definitely a few options that would be that would that would fit for Dylan season really I can see him pitching anywhere for the most part yeah I think with uh a lot of good pitchers right it's like they fit in a lot of places because they're just so damn good but yeah, no, yeah. It, uh, how how I mean yeah when I think about the Cubs one is like imagine how insane that would be is like full circle that he'd come back and you know that but I don't know we I mean we've seen it we've And that one of the teams, I mean, for example, Bleach Report had the, had the Cubs the number one spot where he could go to. I think it's also because he's a guy that, you know, pitches the contact as well. And, you know, the Cubs obviously have an elite defense in the infield. Mm-hmm. So and so uh, how, how, how do you feel about that? And, and is it something that you think uh, the Cubs would do? Because you're right. I mean, are the Cubs willing to give up prospects? It doesn't, it doesn't really seem 
so as of right now, as we're sitting here December 27th, Jed Hoyer hasn't made a deal yet, whether it be, you know, signing a, a big free agent or trading for a big free agent or uh, for a big, you know, a big fish in the market. Um, I mean, do you think that he would go out there and get a friend of our list? And also, if so, how, how do you feel about that? I would, I would love it. I would love it. I think, I think one of our, one of our Achilles heels, Achilles heels last year was, was, was the pitching overall and then mm-hmm. guys staying healthy in that rotation. And then, just from what I've seen from from Valdez, I think he's always been a very good uh, kind of deep game pitcher, or or maybe he'll give you a solid six innings, six seven innings at times. Um, I like it. I like I like it a lot in terms of pitching the contact with the defense that we have. Um, and just adding depth in general, man. It's just it's just I think my my big thing right now with the Cubs and with Jed Hoyer is that. What we have is very good, and we got very far with it, but clearly we are still missing some pieces in terms of really getting an extra push. I know we're going to talk about it shortly, but you look at a team like the Dodgers. Where I don't – now, on paper, this this looks very scary, right? And and, and we want to make moves to sort of counter what they've done. Um, so we don't know how good they're actually going to be, but let's talk in like a, in like a hypothetical kind of world that's, that's going to be a very good ball club. And if, we, if it's anything like it was in 2016, 2017, when we're, we're this team um, in the division, but not the division series, but if we're meeting them wherever in the championship series, um, you know, we're, 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 we're vastly outgunned. And, and a lot of, and a lot of teams are very uh, aware of this. And so I think any sort of edge the Cubs can do in terms of pitching, I, you know, I, I love it. And I, and I, and I love where we're at offensively. As well, we can have more bats, but you know, a pitcher like Framber Valdez, that's that would be great for us. Hell yeah, you're right. I mean, I think that it's one thing that it's like, dude, I need we need something, right? And it's and and whether it be Bieber, whether it be, I mean, we're yeah. for the longest time, and it, it is true. Some people talk about it on Twitter, dude, is like Glass now is just a it's just Jake PV all over again with the Cubs. Like, you know, remember, <laughs> you know, back in the late 2000s, like. Like people like we're always saying Jake Peavy to the Cubs, Jake Peavy to the Cubs, and then one off season, you know they were like, oh, you know Jake Peavy when he was a free agent, he might come to the Cubs, and he never did, and that's what it feels like with Glass now. Uh, they were yeah. it really, it really looked like the Cubs had uh, the deal in place, and it never really happened. Uh, so yeah, I know that Hemi Framber I think would be awesome. He's a great pitcher, and I think like you know, like I said before, he fits the Cubs' identity well uh, when it comes to the defense and all that. So. Hell yeah. I mean, why not? And I think also um, because even when it, when it comes to uh, other pitchers on the market, like a Blake Snell or whatever, you know, people have said, hey, is, is it too many lefties in, in a rotation? And I feel like now, you know, even if you have a, a steal and, and a Snell in a rotation, I mean, you could put, um, you know, uh, somebody in, 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 you know, in between them, you know, like, you know, I know obviously Wicks as well, but you could put guys in between them. I don't think it's that big of a deal as much as it used to be. Um, yeah. especially with guys that pitch to contact I me, mean, either way, they're gonna, they, somebody's gonna get the ball, bat on the ball. So I don't think it, it's it's a giant deal. So um, another thing too with with the Cubs, you know, like I said, they haven't done much, but uh, when it comes to uh other other signings that implicate the Cubs, it would be Kevin Kiermaier to the Blue Jays. Do you think yeah. that means anything for you know Cody Bellinger who's still out there? And I mean, I've you know I have friends that are just like, man, this guy's not he's like nobody wants this guy for over two hundred mil. Um, let alone over 180, over 175. So who knows what's gonna happen? Some so I've seen some people on Twitter are like, this guy might as well just sign like a one year deal again for like 25 to 30, and just you know try you know it, it because it's just really rough that you know the it's not the optics aren't look they don't look great just because of the sense of you know no one knows that they could trust that he'll have that same season he had in 2023. Yeah, uh, some of the some of the analytics, um are you know seem like it was kind of a one off or it seems a little bit lucky whatever you, whatever you may see um i'm okay with the cubs signing him it's just it's just for how much really is is um and i know people say hey it's not your money but at the same time i'm looking at it from a way that like how much they're willing to spend now how much they're willing to spend next year because that's another thing too is that a lot of people aren't thinking about is that and i know nobody like Nobody likes to hear, obviously, that maybe the Cubs are winning until next offseason because next offseason uh, they have guys like Pete Alonso, Jose Altuve, like uh, yeah. larger, like way more free agents than this, this you know, this year um, when it comes to the, the big stars. So, um, yeah. yeah, like 
honestly, do you see more of uh what more of an impact? What makes more of an impact when it comes to signing Bellinger? Is it his performance? Is it the money? And do you think <clears throat> Kevin Kiermeyer to the Blue Jays is more of a sign because it really is between what for the most part between the Cubs and the Blue Jays um, as two teams that really need a guy like that in their lineup. Yeah. Yeah. And, and really, I, I look at the, I look at the Blue Jays as one less, that's one less team for, for belly to kind of think about. And, and hopefully, you know, I, I, I want people to know that belly is, is such an incredible ball player and, and, you know, well, the season that he had last year was just um, – it, it was fun to watch, and it was really what I was hoping to see out of him. But it, it's what I wanted and more, me personally being as a big Cody Bellinger fan. I think, you know, a team like the Cubs specifically don't want to get tied up in something uh, like we did with Jason Hayward, who was also incredible for us defensively and was a great leader. But we had some, we had some struggles uh, at the plate, so – I, I'm hoping this isn't drawn out too much and maybe belly kind of lowers his asking price five years, 70 million. I don't know. Something along <laughs> those lines and not, not pushing it too much. Cause I think for someone who, who's, who's still kind of has something to prove mm -hmm. teams are still kind of on the fence about him. Like you just said, I don't think it would hurt him to lower his asking price and the amount of years. Four years, four years, eighty, whatever the case may be, I don't know, um, but not setting, not setting that that asking price too high, um, and still kind of understand that there still is a little bit more to prove there, uh, and maybe down the line you'll be able to receive something a little bit larger, um, but at the end of the day, I would, I would really love to see this guy back in Chicago. I think us as Cubs fans and and, and him as a ball player, who he is, I feel like it was just like a match made in heaven and. It's it's important to kind of try to figure out how we can get him back in this lineup. We got holes, man, and I think we're a very good uh, contact team. We're we're a team that I think is going to hit for average in, in in some areas and for the most part. Uh, but like I always tell my dad, man, we need a bopper in this lineup. We need we need someone who's going to turn on the ball and just, just hit it to the moon. Um, and we got guys who, who who do hit for power. Dansby has pop in his bat. Ian has pop in his bat. We know Sam Suzuki has pop in his bat. Um, but I just I just need one more man. I need I need I need a big boy. And Belly's that dude. So I'm hoping that we find a way to get him back to get him back on this roster. Because uh, I do believe if we do not get Belly back uh, and we kind of miss out on other guys, we're gonna miss him and we're gonna feel it next year uh, during the season. So. Hopefully the Cubs can can you know make something happen. I don't want to see him go anywhere else. So I don't want to see him go anywhere else. <laughs> Got to find a way to get him back in, back in you know back in Wrigley. Yeah, no, I agree with you, man. Because look, ultimately, regardless of the dollar amount, it's like the Cubs can afford him, can still afford yeah. other guys out there. Um, so yeah, they could definitely go out there and get him. And and also another thing too is that you know the Cubs get him, and you still have the same team you had last year, so or last season, so. It's yeah. still, you know, it's you still need more, and the yeah. whole Reese, the Reese Hoskins, you know, rumors, um, continue to be there. Um, that's one thing too is that it it doesn't make it, it literally doesn't make any sense to me why Reese Hoskins hasn't been signed yet, um, just because it's a one year prove it deal again, um, and it's a, I mean I've heard reporters say it's a match made in heaven when it comes to him and the Cubs, um. So, yeah, I mean, the Cubs have the guys out there. It's just all about how they're going to do it. It's the thing. I don't think that they're going to go like – I don't think they're going to get shut out in the offseason, but I think they're just playing everything, you know, very close to the chest and, and just yes. – and I think that they're going to make something happen, but I think whatever happens, they want to be like a 1,000% sure on it, which I can't be mad at as long as they do it. You know what I mean? And I think yeah. – um that's I think I've you know people have been you know baking jet all all everywhere and up on 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 Twitter and all that stuff but you know it, you know he's always been a, a good general manager for the Cubs and, yeah. and president of baseball ops so I trust that he he's cooking up something in the back and hopefully I mean with the correct council thing we didn't know anything about it until it happened so I mean mm -hmm. hopefully that's the case here um but yeah. we'll see what happens um you mentioned you mentioned the Dodgers so we'll use that as another a way to uh, talk about the rest of the league here. Um, Yoshinobu Yamamoto is now a Dodger at 12 years, 325 mil. 
Um, he joins that the the likes of Shohei Otani, uh, Mike, uh, or Mike, uh, Freddie Freeman, and uh, now Tyler Glass now too, man. I mean, they're they're stacked. I mean, there's no other way to put it, man. I, w- I was honestly so shocked when I saw that he was going to that he, it was official going to the Dodgers because I really thought for a long time I really thought he was going to the Yankees, and I thought he, I thought that it'd be better yeah. for him to go to the Yankees just because of the sense of, um, you know, the brand that the Yankees are. Um, uh, he, I mean, he was seen wearing Yankees hats, um, casually, uh, in the past yeah. and also just like having, you know, uh, another Japanese star in, in, in the Bronx, um, is, is always great. Cause I mean, Hideki Matsui, you know, uh, made a, had a big uh, impact there and he tried to, he, I guess, I guess he was one of the guys that tried to, uh, lure, uh, Yamamoto to the Yankees, but, um, and apparently the Yankees, you know, they offered 300 mil. And just at the end of the day, it was the Dodgers for Yamamoto. And I mean, you can't really blame him. I mean, you go to a team that not only is one of the best teams in baseball, if not the best team in baseball now, you know, with him with him on there, and you have a guy like Shohei Otani at the meeting, like it it really does not yeah. it doesn't get any better than that. And you're living yeah. in LA now, like <laughs> it, it's just is ridiculous, dude. Like you're really the you know, the rich get richer now with this. And the thing is, I also can't be too mad because these are some of the things because some people are like, oh, man, hating on the Dodge and all this. But it's like, ultimately, the Cubs could be doing all these signings. They just don't do it. Um, so and, sure. and and I and I want them to do it. So I can't be too mad about it uh, because I want my team to do it. Um, but how, how do you feel about this signing and and how it impacts the Dodgers? Because this is a team that won 111 games last year. Um, and people are like the <laughs> people are like, man, that that 01 <laughs> Mariners mark is in trouble. So. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, what do you think? What do you think about this, man? I don't even know if there's any like, I don't even know if there's any like analytical insight I can really give to this. When when I look <laughs> at it from this uh, a roster standpoint, the Dodgers don't need to bring back back Clayton Kershaw. This is something that we talked about uh, earlier this year, late in the season, when when they got bounced as quick as they did. Starts up and then ends where it does. Along with a few other pitches, this is it's just it's incredible, man. Dude hasn't thrown a single pitch in the MLB, but we are, we already know what's coming, and so it's pretty awesome. It, it, it's it's pretty it's pretty awesome for the Dodgers. Uh, yeah, I think I think right now what we're looking at is a team that's possibly going to have the best record, of, you know, of all time uh, <laughs> during the regular season, and so. That's fun. That's going to be fun to watch. But then again, at the same time, I hope people know you cannot buy championships. You yep. just can't. Um, and so I, it'll be impressive during the regular season. And, and, and they'll build up a lot of hype going into the playoffs next year. At the same time, you know, anything anything can happen. So great great for the Dodgers. God bless the rest of the of the NL and the AL teams that have to face this ball club and just um, – it's cool, man. It's, it's it's really cool. The Dodgers are just quite literally Thanos. <laughs> I I don't know what to say about this. So it's, this is crazy, bro. It's just I, I... Um, there is a lot of people that are like, "Wow, they're they're he's getting paid more than Garrett Cole, and he hasn't thrown a right. pitch. He's getting right, he hasn't yeah. thrown a pitch in the big leagues." But, but you are right. The the stuff. I mean, the stuff is just like 
undeniable. Like even he's twenty five, and not only that, he's twenty five years old. So even if he doesn't, he, if he even if he doesn't figure it out in the first two years, I mean, he still has so much more to go. Um, we see how good you know. I feel like we have great pitchers, you, great Japanese pitchers are great into their late years. I mean, look at you, Darvish. Uh, you know, yeah. he's still doing great. So it's like it, you, you give him time. And, and and not only that, but the Dodgers have more than any time, 12 years, obviously, uh, with some opt outs, of course. I think it's opt outs after the sixth or seventh year. And that's even so he'll be like, you know, 31, 32. And that's like, you know, it's still fine. Um, so, yeah, it, it's just it, it's it's there's no other more word that I could find than just ridiculous. And um, the Dodgers are, are doing, you know, what our favorite team, what we wish our favorite teams would do. Um, and there might, you know, get more than 116 wins. The Mariners are, are shaking in their boots right now. Cause they might, they might break the record, um, yeah. there. Um, but yeah, like you said, there's not much to go there. I mean, glass now, again, they, they got him and extended him. So they, they're getting more starting pitch. The Royals, I mentioned the Royals. Uh, man, I mean, they've they probably have spent they have spent as, they have spent as much as the Dodgers. But when it comes to a player capital, they've gotten way more p- players than the Dodgers. Um, and uh, for not a lot of money, honestly. I mean, uh, they yeah. these are some of the notable additions they've gotten: Michael Walker for the rotation, Will Smith yeah. for the bullpen, a Hunter Renfro for the outfield, uh, Chris Stratton for the rotation, Seth Lugo for the rotation, Nick Anderson for the the bullpen, and Kyle Wright for the rotation. So. Man, they're they, you know, like that's that's you had those guys, and I feel like you're automatically, uh, you know, you will automatically compete compete for that last po- playoff spot in the AL yeah. now, and uh, like yeah. I mean, they already have great talent there. I mean, you don't you know, you, obviously you don't have to mention him, but Bobby Wood Jr., one of the best players yeah. in baseball right now, he's yeah. there. Um, and you have guys like you know Chris Bubich in in there, and and you just have you already have young talent like Melendez and all that, so it's. Yeah, you're only adding to it, but um, I will say, you know, the people I've been talking about, they added Will Smith, who who, who looks like he's a perennial uh, uh, World Series uh, guy, like he's always in the World Series. So they're like, of course, the world is going to the World Series in 2024, but it's a joke. <laughs> but when it happens, I wouldn't be surprised uh, yeah. whatsoever, because I mean, the Diamondbacks made it, you know, this past off season or that's this past season. So, um, but yeah, when it when it comes to other guys they've gotten, I mean. You, they they've shored up the rotation. Um, like I said, with Waka and Kyle, Kyle writes a guy that um, he had a good season with the, uh, the Braves, but it's just injuries that kind of um, that have kind of hurt him. Uh, him. He's like a Mike Soroka, like a guy that you, you, he looked like a top of the rotation type guy. Um, but the, the injuries have just uh, affected him. And, and the Braves obviously have, um, you know, uh, they have the, the luxury of, of getting rid of these guys and still, I haven't seen anything with 
you know, overly impressive with the Guardians. I haven't obviously we know what's going on with the White Sox. Uh, I think the Twins are going to continue to be one of the top teams in that division, if not the top team. Uh, and, and you mean the, the Royals can easily come in second in that division, right behind the Twins. I still think the Twins are the Twins will be the elite ball club in that division for the most part. But you know, anything anything can happen. So. I think it's great. I think it's great. And for me personally, the more competitive that the AL Central is, the better it is for that division uh, for the long term in terms of just any sort of big name players coming to that division. Um, it's great. It, it, it's, it's great. So I'm hoping the, the Royals kind of, you know, ruffle some feathers next year and, 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 you know, surprise some people. Yeah, man. I, yeah. And it, it is the thing too is that with these divisions like the AL Central and the NL Central, like some teams get a few players and it's like, damn, like they're automatically competitors and they're yeah, automatically exactly. like contenders and in, in the division and and yeah, I mean the the Royals are a team that are getting a new stadium and you know they yeah. they're you know they want to sell tickets and get people in the, into the into Kaufman now. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens with them, but I think it's very honestly it hasn't been talked about enough just because obviously they're a small market team and, you know, say what you want. As you said, you can't buy a championship and we've seen plenty of teams yeah. win the off season and not do anything, um, including yes. a team like the White Sox. They've won it before the Padres have won it before the Mets and they haven't done anything with it. So um, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be fascinating to see what they do in the upcoming year with young talent. They have not only that, not only the guys that they got, they signed, but they have got plenty of guys coming up in their system and uh, ready to thrive. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do there. Um, But I think that should do it uh, for this edition of the at bet podcast. I want to thank everyone for watching. Um, We'll try to get uh, Chris Pennant on soon. He hasn't been in a while. Gabe Wilkins, of course, will join us on our next episode. So I want to thank everyone for watching any, any type of work content. You know, we have, you know, war media bears den um, with sports on Chicago, Sean Sierra, Joe uh, Tanksley. Um, So check that out as well. Uh, check out all our socials. We're on everything from TikTok to Threads, Twitter, all that stuff. So ch- definitely check us out. Uh, for Saul Rodriguez, Miles Porter. Hopefully, everyone enjoys their new year and take it easy. <laughs>